What's up, everybody? My name is Scooter, and this is Kentucky Rural Stand Alive Training. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to do a weapon disarm. You're like the bad guy, you want your shoes, your wallet, or something. First, you need to volunteer. I found this guy here out in the woods. He has fairly short arms, so should be pretty easy to disarm. All right, so first, I'm gonna give him the training weapon. Here you go. And uh, he is going to point it at me like he, he wants my wallet or something. And uh, now I'm just gonna grab it. It's just a warm up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now I'm just gonna grab it. You're not supposed to go that fast. You're making me look bad. So now I'm just gonna grab it again. And then from here, you twist and he should just fall. You're supposed to fall down now. Now you just twist and he should just fall down. And now you have the weapon. And it is just that simple. Thank you so much for watching Scooters Kentucky Staying Alive. <laughs>What's up everybody? My name is Scott and you're watching Kentucky Ballistics. We're back out on the range and today we're going to do a little bit of an experiment. I've seen some people shoot 50 BMG out of a 12 gauge shotgun. Well that got me thinking. I wonder if we can shoot 700 Nitro Express, a 1000 grain round out of a shotgun. Tried to fit this in a 12 gauge, didn't work out very well. But it fits perfectly in a 10 gauge shotgun. This is a partner single shot 10 gauge shotgun. And as you can see, it fits perfectly inside there. So today, we're gonna set this thing up on a lead sled, load it up with a 700 Nitro Express, and then we're gonna pull a string from a safe distance and see what happens. But first, we need to see if this shotgun works properly. So let's go try it out. So we're gonna start out shooting some steel targets and I'm gonna be using some three and a half inch, 10 gauge, one and three quarter ounce lead slugs. All right, let's start out with that one that's closest. <laughs> Boop. Load another one in there. <laughs> oh, that one got stuck. Oh, knocked it over. Take one more at our red target. <laughs> All right, let's go shoot a few other things. So next, I got some nacho cheese, but it's been sitting out here for quite a while. It's probably frozen, so... I also got a microwave. All right, I'm just gonna put this in the microwave, shut that. I know maybe some of you are saying I shouldn't be microwaving my nacho cheese, but you know what kind of cheese this is? Nacho cheese. You know, I feel like that's probably exactly what would happen if you actually turned on a microwave with a giant can of nacho cheese in it. All right, one more test. We're gonna see how the 10 gauge does against a giant can of baked beans. All right, we used a slug last time. This time we're gonna use some double lot buck. A lot of times when I hit cans with double lot buck, not a lot happens, but uh, when you use a 10 gauge, um, it's still pretty eventful. They busted up that can. So now that we know that the 10 gauge shotgun functions properly, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our experiment. I'll be putting the 10 gauge shotgun in this lead sled. I'm gonna load it up with the 700 nitro, tie a string around the trigger, get back at a safe distance, Pull the string and see what happens. So just for reference, this is a 10 gauge shotgun shell. It is a three and a half inch shell. And this is the 700 Nitro Express. That is a 70 caliber round and it is a 1000 grain projectile. What do you think is gonna happen when we load this inside the 10 gauge shotgun? Is it gonna function or is it gonna blow up? There's only one way to find out. Went ahead and tied my string around my trigger and I had to put a piece of plastic in here. So I've got something a little firmer to pull against because this trigger is really stiff. So now you just pull the hammer back. And when I pull the string, 
Should pull the trigger. Okay, got some weighted lead bags. Last but not least, we're gonna load it. 700 nitro, 1,000 grain soft point. Put that right there. And... <laughs> Pull the hammer back. And now we evacuate. All right, let's see if this thing fires. Gonna get that tight. <laughs> Okie dokie, here we go. I'm not really sure what just happened. Okay, so it didn't sound like much happened. So we <laughs> didn't just wanna run up on the gun because what if it just explodes? So we got the slow-mo camera and looked at the footage and it looks like there wasn't enough compression for really much of anything to happen. Oh, look at that. So our brass expanded outward and uh, I think we had just enough compression for the bullet to just <laughs> out the end of the barrel. Should be somewhere over here. I can't imagine it went far. Okay, so the round actually shot out of that shotgun a little harder than we thought. I thought it just went bloop on the ground. It actually shot it fairly far and we can't find it. So we're gonna do it again, but this time, I'm gonna put this five gallon water jug in front of it and we're gonna see just how much power it has coming out of the 10 gauge. All right, let's go ahead and load up another round. Boop. And we will get behind the truck. So uh, nothing again. <laughs> okay, well, uh, pretty uneventful again, and uh, no power <laughs> at all. Didn't even put a dent in our five gallon water jug. Let's take a look at the brass again. The brass expanded out again, and we have our bullet here on the table. <clears throat> Just completely undamaged. So the conclusion of 700 Nitro in a 10 gauge shotgun, pretty lame. Nothing really happens and I'm kind of sad about that. So we're gonna do another science experiment. What happens when your 10 gauge shotgun barrel is obstructed? So first we have to obstruct the barrel. Luckily, it's good and mushy out here. Oh gosh. That is definitely obstructed. Yep, that is, that's a lot of dirt. Boop. Pack that down in there. Maybe a little more. Boop! <laughs> it just, it needs, I feel like it needs to be firmer. I <sighs> think that'll do it. And now we'll get loaded up with a three and a half inch 10 gauge double lot buck. Close it up, pull the hammer back and get out of here. If this don't do it, I don't know what will. Here we go. All right, the shotgun busted open. And uh, wow, it cleared it. It cleared it, cleared all the, all the muds out of there. 10 gauge, built to last. Load up another double lock buck, 10 gauge. Trigger is good. Hammer is back. Let's get out of here. Here we go. I tell you what. 10 gauge shotguns apparently are about as tough as they come. It cleared it all out of there again. Look at that. It's a good thing Elmer Fudd didn't have a 10 gauge 
because Bugs Bunny would totally be missing a thumb. So the uh, 10 gauge barrel is actually starting to bulge when we've got bulging right here about halfway down on the barrel. So now I'm wondering if we're getting closer to this barrel just completely giving up. I'm go ahead and give us some more of this. This has went from, well, a 700 nitro fire and a 10 gauge to a partner 10 gauge torture test. I'm genuinely curious right now to if this barrel is ever going to burst. Let's get out of here. There we go. I think we did it. I think that was it. it it's missing the ship. It's still clogged. It's still. Okay, so instead of the gun blowing up, the gun shot everything out this end. Let's see if it opens this time. All right, here we go, folks, for the 20th time. That sounded louder than last time. Maybe we blew it up this time. Okay, looks like we finally did it. We split the shotgun. It starts right here and goes all the way up the shotgun. Still clogged. Oh, oh dear. Well, you know what we gotta do? We gotta pull the trigger again on it now. I'm just glad we finally got something to happen. I mean, good Lord, this thing's built like a tank. Not gonna put the bag on it this time. Let's get back. Oh my gosh. Wow, okay. We got it to burst that time. So our split starts here and it got really big this time. <laughs> I promise this is the last time I'm gonna do it one more time. So I just can't help myself. Last one. now this gun is completely done now completely busted all right so this is what i wish would have happened with the first pull of the 700 nitro this is what i was really hoping for but now i know that a 10 gauge partner single shot shotgun is extremely tough well, today's video didn't go exactly as planned, but it still ended in a pretty spectacular fashion. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. Also, be sure and check me out on Kentucky Customs, Kentucky Ballistics Shorts, Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All those can be found in the description down below or on my website, KentuckyBallistics.com. And as always, my name is Scott. Thank you so much for watching Kentucky Ballistics, and I'll see you next time.